the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good morning, DMV. Happy Saturday. We are waking up to lots of clouds out there, but overall, it's shaping out to be a beautiful day ahead. So definitely keep it here. We'll have a check on that forecast coming up. And today is the last day for lawmakers to come to a consensus before a government shutdown. We'll look at how businesses and people across the DMV will be affected if it does happen. And we have highlights from Art All Night, which kicked off Friday with lots of food, fun, and of course, some art. And we are bringing you details on that train derailment that left Metro lines delayed for most, most of Friday. And we'll tell you what the possible cause was for that incident. But coming up on 8 o'clock right now, we take a live look outside. This is over the Capitol. The camera moving there a little bit. Not sure if it's because it's windy or the camera is not steady, but that is a picturesque shot giving you a glimpse into what today is going to look like. Maybe some sunshine, but it is cloudy and nice and warm. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on DC News Now. I'm Tosin Fakile. We'll get to our top stories in just a few minutes, but today a person you're going to really love is here. <laughs> That's Brittany Ward. And because the weather is just going to be beautiful. Yeah, honestly, today is going to be a beautiful day for you guys to get outside and enjoy it. And then spoiler alert, uh, 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 spoil alert spoiler Tosin. alert there we go <laughs> I, don't, I just had a brain fart for like <laughs> two seconds uh sunday looking way better than today so definitely get outside and enjoy it satellite and radar showing you the overall picture that storm system that brought that heavy downpours to new york slowly inching closer out of there but notice the dc metro area we are dry and that's going to be the trend as we head through your day today temperature wise we did start to see a little dip in our temperature here in the nation capital 65 is the current temperature lower 60s as you head over there to Hagerstown still holding up to the upper 50s as you head along the ridge tops and in those mountain counties. Now, overall planning your day here in the nation's capital, we're slowly going to be seeing those temperatures dip still down into the lower 60s as we head into that 9 o'clock hour, mid 60s by 10, upper 60s by 11. But notice clouds. That will be the trend as we head through your day today before sunshine returns to end out the weekend. So definitely keep it here. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. All right, Brittany, thank you. It is 8.01 and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy tweeted an update about the government shutdown after his latest effort to keep the government temporarily opened failed. That tweet yesterday said, quote, after meeting with House Republicans this evening, it is clear the misguided Senate bill has no path forward and is dead on arrival. That tweet, what tweet went on to say the House will continue to work around the clock to keep government open and prioritize the needs of the American people. Now, if a solution is not reached by tonight, Night, hundreds of thousands of non-essential federal employees will not get paid. The last government shutdown happened in late 2018 under former President Donald Trump. It lasted 35 days. People we talked to say they're hopeful but concerned. So I hope that they come up with a decision and come up with one real soon. Because people have mortgages, people have car notes, people have a lot of things they're responsible for. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and if some services will continue, if that shutdown happens, that includes border protection, federal law enforcement, TSA and air traffic control. Now, those employees would be required to work without pay. And 803, the Capital Area Food Bank has been making preparations for the looming government shutdown, estimating about a third of all government workers in the DMV could need food assistance. Our Daniel Hamburg takes us inside their distribution center, showing the help that could be available to federal employees employees and contractors. Yeah, as you can see here, the food bank has been preparing all week for this looming government shutdown that could affect as many as 100,000 government workers and 87,000 people in the WIC program. They'll be getting boxes like these with all kinds of canned goods, protein and fruits and vegetables to help sustain them as they don't have any income. We know that you don't negotiate your rent or your car payments or your student loan payments. So the food portion of the budget is likely to be cut. 
and they'll likely seek support from us. That could be the reality for government workers in the coming days, furloughed, as Congress can't agree on a budget. There are additional contractors to the federal government. There are those who are providing meal service, cleaning crews, etc. Those are all in addition to the 100,000 federal government workers. During the 2019 shutdown, the Capital Area Food Bank saw an extra 4,200 people visiting its pop-up distribution sites. And that's not counting who showed up to its 400 partner food pantries. There are some, lots of lessons that we can draw from from 2019, but we will continue to learn as we execute these pop-up distributions and really, you know, understand the magnitude of need. Six sites are ready to be set up across the greater Washington area. It's not something the food bank budgeted for, but they've already ordered more food to distribute across its network. We are prepared to respond to meet the nutritional needs of those who are um, who will be looking for support. So as we do prepare for a government shutdown, these are the boxes that are going to be available for the federal workers and federal contractors starting twice a week, Thursday nights and Saturday mornings, as long as the shutdown lasts in Northeast. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. WMATA is ordering an inspection of all 2000 and 3000 series trains after a derailment near Reagan National Airport. It happened just before 11 o'clock in the morning on Friday as the Blue Line train was headed towards the Potomac Yard Metro Station. Officials say something stuck in the tracks caused that derailment. About 40 passengers were on board at the time. They were all transferred to a shuttle, but that incident disrupted train service for much of the day. And a developing story we're following the last living suspect in the 1996 drive by shooting that killed Tupac Shakur has been arrested and charged with murder. Rachel Mentioff has the latest on the long awaited breakthrough. An arrest made in connection with the 1996 murder of legendary West Coast rapper Tupac Shakur. Las Vegas police charged 60 year old Dwayne Keith Davis, AKA Keefe D with murder Friday morning. It's a long awaited break in the case that puzzled investigators and fascinated the public since the rap music icon was gunned down 27 years ago. It has often been said justice delayed is justice denied. It's a quote we hear often and for many, many years when talking about our legal system, but not in this case. The Las Vegas Police Department described Davis as the person who ordered the death of Shakur after an altercation at the MGM Grand Hotel. Davis has been known to investigators and has himself admitted in interviews and in a 2019 memoir that he was in the Cadillac where the gunfire erupted during the September 1996 drive-by shooting right near the Las Vegas Strip. Tupac was 25 years old. He had been nominated six times for a Grammy Award and is largely considered one of the most influential rappers of all time. L.A. radio host Dominique De Prima knew Shakur from the Bay Area even before he rose to fame. I want people to remember Tupac based on what he said, his lyrics, his work on the screen, his work in the community, which is vast. The um, documentary Dear Mama does a great job of laying that out and really showing where he came from as the child of the movement and someone who continued in his own way to try to better his community. The arrest comes two months after Las Vegas police raided Davis's wife's Henderson, Nevada home. Greg Kading, a retired LAPD detective, spent years investigating the Shakur killing, and he says this indictment is a long time coming. I mean, it changes history. Um, it, 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 we've we've been treating Tupac's murder as an unsolved case, and it will no longer be perceived or uh, presented that way. It's now a solved case. Somebody has been arrested, they will clear the case and somebody will be held accountable. What a major breakthrough in an important case. All right, 808 this morning and you still have a chance at a mega jackpot this weekend with the Powerball. $960 million is up for grabs. The ninth biggest jackpot in history. If you win and choose the lump sum option, that means you're walking away with about $441 million. It is a long shot to win. Your odds, one in 292 million. That next drawing tonight at 11, so good luck if you play. And if you are hitting the roads this weekend, well, there are some changes coming to the George Washington Parkway that could affect your drive. Traffic anchor Shanika Grimshaw is helping you navigate those closures, telling you where they are. 
New George Washington Memorial Parkway closures will start this weekend. So here's what to expect. The ramp from southbound Route 123 will be closed. Delays are expected to increase on GW Parkway starting Saturday with a months long series of ramp closures at 123. Now the three ramps that filter drivers on and off GW Parkway to and from Route 123 in McLean, Virginia will be under construction for a staggered period between this weekend and late November, so that'll be a long time. Now there will be road work going on and the first ramp closure is from southbound 123 to southeast GW Parkway. That's starting Saturday through again mid to late October and the ramp will first be closed on weekends from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. for tree clearing and drainage installation. Now when that project is completed, there will be more closures for constructions, so do be aware of this when traveling along GW Parkway. In the studio, Shanika Grimshaw, DC News Now. All right, your time now, 8.09. And honestly, guys, it's shaping out to be a beautiful way to end out the month of September. So if you are going to be heading to brunch this afternoon in the nation's capital, temperature-wise, going to be on the warmer side. But those clouds, they'll be sticking around through much of the day today. By 10 o'clock, temperatures will be in the mid-60s, upper 60s, though, as we head into lunchtime. And then as we head into that 2 o'clock hour, we finally warm it up into the lower 70s. But as we head into your Sunday, we're talking about an abundance of sunshine and even warmer temperatures. So definitely keep it here. We'll have a look at that forecast coming up.